Jews, what the European Jews, the modern European Jews would call the Yom HaShoah, right? And the Yom HaShoah is that day to um, remember, you know, the, the heroes and the martyrs and the victims of what is called the Holocaust. But they like to say the European Holocaust. And even with our um, trusted reference and resource, speaking of the Hebrew for Christians, we find that also done on, on their page, speaking about the European Holocaust. But no one remembers the days of slavery. No one remembers the Ethiopian Holocaust. But we, the children of His Majesty, do remember that. So we're making the motion or the proposal to the community you know, of, of his majesty, right? And to the Ethiopian, the children of the Ethiopians and the children of Israel, that this, this um, so-called Jewish holiday, and here's the thing about it, this Jewish holiday, we'll call it a Jewish holiday because ones will ignore the black Jews of Harlem and the black and the brown lost found sheep in the house of Israel. Once we include them, and put them, their witness back into or, or forward in the testimony, then we'll see how there is so much that occurred with Judaism that you y'all didn't know, black and brown sheep, that had a lot to do with you, but your leaders, your misleaders, you know, a lot of your Negro leaders, the so-called black church, right? At that time and other so-called civil rights, civil rights leaders, right? One's going after Farrell and the federal government. And basically the same things that happened with the children of Israel in the wilderness happened with the once lost black and brown sheep of the house of Israel in the Americas and the Caribbean, in this North country and in the other countries, right? Where we have been driven, where we have been dispersed as a, as a diaspora. So when we're speaking about the history of the Jews, right, or the Judah-ish, right, more correctly, Yehuda-ish or Judah-ish, right, peoples in the African diaspora. This is not to say that we are so-called African in the sense that commonly it is reported an African is an African, right? But we know that the Afro-Canaanite lands have been given to the children of Israel, those lands which are our lands. And this is what the whole biblical, scriptural, you know, revelation and prophecy is all about. But just to propose that these three, right, that Yom HaShoah, we did another video where we sought to address and articulate on that. And this might be a bit much, you know, at one time, we're also in this Torah portion reading and feeding and also like to share, share more revelation as the Spirit has given, you know, utterance and as we have been meditating on this time and in this time as we are looking forward, right? As we're looking forward to Juneteenth. So let's put this on the calendar. Juneteenth would be the harvest or the Shavuot, Shavuot, right? Or the Pentecost in the New Testament sense, that harvest time, the outpouring of the Spirit. So Psalm 90, which we had um, neglected to, um, to read on the TJIF, we actually looked at, the, when we looked for the date, it was the 6th, it was under the 6th of April, because April was just, just a, a, a lot of powerful revelation. And this is the first Torah portion as we regularly resume our Torah portion reading and feeding after the High Isla Day. I was commenting that it was, sort of like a, um, it was sort of like, a, like a, almost like a vacation, so to speak. But we as brother priests still were in ministering and ministry and in service. And as we start to meditate on those themes and now coming out of that season and beginning our um, Torah portion reading and feeding is again, we're at Akar Remot or Akar Remot after the death, right? So how interesting is the correspondence of the Yom HaShoah. And this remember the Yom HaShoah, the Ethiopian Holocaust. We know there was an Ethiopian Holocaust. We know that the word genocide 
was coined because of the word sound of the king of kings, right? Of Kedamawi Hala Selassie, the destruction of a seed, of a zar, the destruction of a race. Literally, what his majesty was speaking of was that attempt to destroy Jah's people, Jah's seed, right? The black and the brown sheep of the house of Israel, both at home, right? Within greater Israel, speaking of Ethiopia and Judah land, and also those abroad, those scattered to the four winds of the world, but particularly in the North country and in the countries in which we have been driven, according to John's glory, the glory of his majesty, according to the Bible, and according to that word rightly divided, rightly explained. And then looking at the historical evidence and recalling the words of the King of Kings to heart and mind, where he says that God, Ha Elohim, Baruch Hashem, the source, the power, right? And history and his story, right? The good news of the King of Kings in Christ will be the judge. Now, this was a very prophetic speech that was given to these 52 members. Now, what we have here is Zephaniah, Zephaniah chapter three, Zephaniah chapter three, all from verses like eight, you know, and you can read forward from verse eight, where John says that his determination was to gather together the nation. So there's a, there's a whole half of the story, right? There's a whole half of the story that has not been told, right? And this is what we're seeking to share and to minister and to preach and to proclaim. So it's important for us as we look at even next year, right? As you know, next year in New Jerusalem, right? Next year in the promised land, that hope, that expectation, that word sound that is said at the fulfillment of Passover, right? Next year, may we come together and sup as that hope, that expectation for the fuller and the fulfillment of that word to John people, to the once lost, now found black and brown sheep in the house of Israel. So our proposal is that the Yom HaShoah, and we can actually prove this, this, this quite um, compelling and I think even conclusive evidence that shows that what the so-called European Jews might speak of as the Yom HaShoah and the Yom HaZikaron and the Yom HaAtzmaut. Now, these three days actually precede Passover, right? And in this season, this time aligns once again, right? Almost like it did in 2014 with Independence Day or that new day, that five year to the very day Ethiopian Liberation Day, that May 5th, 1941. Another update and correction we had said elsewhere, 85th, why this was the 85th anniversary. Actually, it's the 75th anniversary of Ethiopian Independence Day, Imperial we have to give glory to his majesty, holy Ethiopia. This was Ethiopia of the covenant, distinguished and different than the present Ethiopia, which we pray for. We pray for the peace right, of that new Jerusalem. We pray for that peace. But we know that there's war in heaven. Right? We're in these latter days and time. There's war in heaven as those things that were hidden in John's word become more revealed in the light of Christ. So Yom HaShoah, speaking to the Holocaust, right? And we need to adopt this, right? When I said it's already ours, actually. It's already there. When you understand the, the true relation that the Jews who call themselves Jews, in fact, it's a fulfillment of that prophetic word that we have in Revelation, in Revelation chapter three, verse nine, can we talk about the Jews who call themselves Jews and, and are not? Well, yes, but have you really read the word? Have you studied? Now, after reading the word, you got that plain interpretation. Let us study for the context and pray 
for his spirit, for the revelation. We have two and nine of revelation. Let's go to two and nine. It says, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. This is the Messiah, Moshia speaking to the Jews, the Judah-ish who believed, who amained, who had faith that Yeshua, ha Moshia, ben ha Elohim hayim, that Yeshua, Jesus Christos, for, for show is the Messiah is the son of the living power. So here we have Revelation chapter two, where he says, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. All right, so very clear. A lot of folks, they, they see that there with the Jews and they just run off. Right? But they need to study to show themselves approved so they'd be not ashamed. Because here, as we now compare 2 and 9 with Revelation 3 and 9, where there's the message to Philadelphia. Philadelphia. This is the true church in the professing church. This is the true church of the King of Kings. Right, The true church in the professing Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia, brotherly love, right? These things saith he that is caduce, he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, have the key of great King David, right? So he who be who he be, Kadamawi Hala Salasi, seated upon the throne of great King David, in that fulfillment of prophecy and that fulfillment of the word is he that hath the key of David. He that openeth and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man openeth. Now, when you study this here and then you go to the prophet, prophet Amos, Amos chapter nine. If you now compare, this is how we rightly divide the word of truth. We now go to Amos chapter nine. 9-11. Sound familiar? Well, that's Ethiopian New Year Day, right? September 11th. You didn't know? Wow. You know, 9-11, the future kingdom, the blessing, the Lord's return, the sovereign's return, Adonai Ja, Rastafari return, and the reestablishment of the Davidic monarchy as is witness, as is testified in the true history of of humanity in the person of Kedamawi Haile Selassie. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David. So here in Amos chapter 9, 9 11, Yahweh, Jah says that he who be who he be will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old, as in the days of the Kedem, right? So Kedemawi Hala Salasi is he who be who he be, who is in that tabernacle of great King David. And also on the record, he witnessed and testifies as little David beat Goliath, even in the 20th century with faith, courage, and a just cause, right? That they may possess the remnant of Edom, who do we call as Edom and Esau? Well, that's the brother of Jacob, right? The brother of you Jakes, right? Esau, Edom, right? The Khazars, many of them also as the Khazars, right? Now there's a, there's a word of prophecy here, which when we read it here in Amos 9 and 7, and then we get to Revelation chapter 3, verse 9, may John give you repentance to the acknowledging of the truth here, that they may possess the remnant, the remnant, notice speak of a remnant, right? The remnant, that righteous remnant, right? Of Edom, of Esau, and of all the heathen, and of all the heathen, all the nations, a remnant, the righteous remnant of all the nations. See, this is speaking here in the Old Testament, of the church, even the church of the firstborn in the New Testament, which are called by my name, which are called by the Hashem, saith Yahweh, he 
who be who he be, saith Jah that doeth this. So now let's look at Revelation again, right? That was Revelation, that was Amos 9, 11 here, Revelation 3. So it's to the angel of the church of Philadelphia, the sixth of the seven churches. Now these seven churches are interesting because these seven churches are from that, from the crucifixion time, right? And from the outpouring from Pentecost, actually, it began from Pentecost, which is what we are counting the Omer and counting the Omer to Shabuot, which in the Old Testament speaks of the, from the Exodus, right? To reaching Mount Sinai, Mount Sinai. Now in the New Testament, right? We don't come again to Mount Sinai, but we come to Mount Zion. So here's that prophecy of Zion. And yes, Ionized Rastafari is Zionist. We've been Zionists before the so-called Zionists became and called themselves Zionists, right? It's very clear. It's very evident. He says, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. He have set before us an open door, right? The King of Kings has set before I and I as Rastafari an open door in the Messiah, in Yeshua, in our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And no man can shut it for thou hast a little strength, a little strength and has kept my word. We have kept that utterance of the King of Kings. We said, God, Jah and history will be the judge has kept my word and has not denied my name. Doni I Jah Rastafari Kedamawi Haile Salase. We have not denied his name. That's that true church in the professing church, those of the Orthodox, right? The Orthodox of the right glory. Right of the right opinion, right of the right faith, right? Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, the synagogue of the opposition. Objection overruled. I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, which say they are of Judah or they are Jews, which is to say Judah and are not because they are not of the tribe of Yehuda, right? It says, they are not, but they do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. This is revealed in the person of the King of Kings, Selassie. This is also revealed in the, in the hidden Ethiopia, Israel, right? Or Ethiopia, state of Israel relationship during the times of his Massey. Once again, the book by Haggai Ehrlich and also the article that we have on our grace book at RastafariGroundation.com on Ethiopia and Israel. It's, 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 a, it's a worth read because there's a whole half of the story, right? Because as we know, there are faithful Ethiopians, children of Ethiopians, and they are faithless or careless. Same thing with the children of Israel. Among every nation, among every people, in Jah view, he sees it as that. So what we're seeing here in Revelation 3 and 9 is the possession or the repo, right? The repossession of that faithful remnant of Edom, of Edom, of Esau, of Esau. Right? He says that he will make them to come and worship and to prostrate before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Because why has he loved I and I? Why has he loved him? Right? Because thou hast kept the word of my patience. I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast, hold that firmly, which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Isn't it interesting in the revelation to the sixth of the seven churches? 
to the church of his majesty, the true church of the firstborn, that the connection of the crown, no cross, no crown, right? But Ethiopia, we know Ethiopia as a nation of the cross. And this is why the haters hate, right? But it says, hold that firm, fast, which thou hast. Don't let nobody snatch it out your hand, right? Don't let nobody snatch it from you, that no man take thy crown. That no man take thy crown. Now, here's the key. Here's the key for the Rastafari revelation right here. Him, right, that overcometh will I make a pillar. An arm, the amud, amud in the Hebrew, armed, right? We're going to talk about the amida, right? Stay tuned for the amida, right? What is the standing prayer? What is the constant prayer, right? How is that giving that fulfillment of the daily sacrifice and the sacrifice of praise, of thanks and praise? Him that overcometh, will I make a pillar in the temple or the the Beit Mikdash, right? Or the Beit Mekdes, right? The house of the holy, the temple of my God, of Elohai. Remember Yeshua HaMoshiach on the cross when he says, Elohai, Elohai, Eloi, Eloi, Elohai, Elohai, Hailei, Hailei, my power, my power. He says, he will make him who overcometh a pillar in the temple of Elohai, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of Elohai, of Hailei, Selassiei, and the name of the city of Elohai, Hailei, Selassiei, which is New Jerusalem. Do you know that New Jerusalem was established in Ethiopia? Did you know that? Right, La Libella, right? Well, he who is known as La Libella, right? And the rock hewn churches, right? The vision that was shown, right? To those righteous kings was that this is New Jerusalem, right? That New Jerusalem, right? The name of the city of Elohai, Hailei, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven, the Shemaim, from Elohai, from Hailei, Selassiei, and I will write upon him my new name. So that new name, that revelation of the new name to Ionias Rastafari, but the person, right, of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, right, the glory is still one. He is one. He is the one. But that new name revelation is found right here. Right now, why do we point to this? Because of that verse, verse nine. Right? Verse nine. And the the hidden, you know, we say hidden Zion or the two Zions. There's a book on the two Zions, right? And our African, so to speak, our African Zion that Ethiopia and the monarchy, the Davidic monarchy of his imperial majesty represents. And the connection of that revelation and May 5th, right? And also with the remembrance, the day of remembrance, right? For the patriots, for the martyrs, right? For those saints that we read of in Revelation, those who were the called, the chosen, and the faithful with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in that hour right, of tribulation that came upon all of the earth. As his majesty said before the gathered nations on the League of Nations, the match has been struck in Ethiopia, but the flames will burn Europe. Many laughed it off. They said, oh, whatever, right? But surely, surely prophecy came to pass. Behold that prophet, as it says, behold that prophet who is likened, you know, that one who is likened to Moses, right? That fulfillment, you know, that, that fulfillment right there in the person of the king of kings. But the aspect concerning the Jews, I think is very interesting. And some of these works that we just briefly reference. 
and recommend right here. This is a little longer of a video, you know, sort to do a short of it just on the Yom HaShoah, right? Why that day is not just for the so-called um, European, right, Holocaust. And if we do say the European Holocaust, what about those black and brown Jews who died also in the concentration camps, right, in Nazi Germany, and those who were ethnically and, and genocidally genocided, right, even in Europe. Remember the word genocide, was coined because of his majesty's word sound, right, in 1936, before those gathered nations, right, the nations of the earth. One more area of, of prophecy right here, because this is that prophecy. We can go in the tongues and the languages, but it's the prophecy that builds us up, that builds up the church of the firstborn. Here in Zephaniah chapter 3, Zephaniah means the mystery of Jah. The mystery of Yah, right? It said in the latter days, that mystery of God would be fulfilled. It would be revealed. The judgment of the nations from verse 8, Zephaniah chapter 3, therefore wait ye upon me. You see that waiting? And you see the word in Revelation concerning the patience, right? Patience, you know, and, and, and the faith of the saints, right? Wait ye upon me. Saith Yahweh, saith Jah, until the day that I rise up to the prey. You say he's going to raise up the tabernacle of David. And here he uses metaphoric language that reminds I and I of who he be. Behold the lion of the tribe of Judah. Until the day that I rise up to the prey for my determination is to gather the nations. Behold, Emperor Haile Selassie first, the prophetic speech to the 52 members of the League of Nations in Geneva, Switzerland, June 30th, 1936. Remember, this is what now is leading forward, right? This is from May 5th, right? 1936, and the fulfillment five years the very day May 5th, 1941, right? That Independence Day, that Liberation Day, that Great Day. Ethiopia, hoy, desibelish, bamlakish, hayam, ben nugusish. So he says, until, right? He says, until the philosophy, until the day that I rise up to the prey, for my determination is to gather the nations, gather the Goyim, gather the Gentiles. And 72 nations, notice there were 52 members of the League of Nations, but there were 72 nations, right, that bowed to the person of the King of Kings upon the throne of great King David. The Trinity, right, the power of the Trinity on great King David's throne, on Yahweh's throne, on Jehovah's throne. So we have 72 bowed over here. Now he's speaking before 52. What about those other nations? All right, just think about it. His determination was to gather the nations that I may, I may assemble the kingdoms, assemble all of the governments of the earth, the earth rightful ruler to assemble. So it was his determination right, that there was to be a League of Nations. His determination that there was to be a United Nation, good, bad, or indifferent, we see his determinations to gather, right, the nations that I might pour and assemble the kingdoms to pour, right, upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger. You have to recognize that before his majesty spoke those prophetic words about the match being struck in Ethiopia, but the flames holocausting, burning Europe, right? That they had no idea that this could happen. They thought that this Nazi Germany going to just, and the fascists and all of these evil dudes, they're just going to do whatever they want to do. And everybody was standing down. Everybody was bending, bending over backward for that Satanistic agenda. But as Madsy spoke, they laughed off the word. They ignored the word. 
but some kept it to heart and said, behold, right, a prophet and even a greater than a prophet because the, the accuracy of that prophecy to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Right? So World War II, so-called, was because right, of Father's zeal right, for Zion, his zeal for Sion, his zeal for Kedestitu, Ethiopia, his zeal for his covenant people, for the children of the Ethiopians and the children of Israel and his dwelling in Zion. That's why the whole war, this is why they always avoid the fascist invasion in the historical retellings or their, their make-believe tellings, right? He says, furthermore, for then will I turn to the people a pure language. We're at this gathering before the League of Nations. He said he would like to speak uh, French, but in order for him to reveal the fullness of his spirit from his heart, you know, that fullness, he had to speak in the pure language. For then will I turn to the people a pure language that they may all call upon the name of the sustainer of a gaziabi herlotu sepan, on the name of he who be, who he be, his divine majesty, Kadamawi, Haile Selassie, to serve him with one consent. But here they refuse to serve him. His Majesty spoke, right, for the victims, right, for those martyrs, right, for those victims of the Holocaust, the Ethiopian Holocaust, which if they had bothered, right, and had a human heart and mind to care, right, and were not careless, then what happened in Europe would have never happened in Europe. Right. But be that as it as it may, these things had to happen that we know who he be, that truly it is he and none other. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, even the daughter of my disperse, now speaking to the Ethiopians, the children of the Ethiopians abroad, the children of Israel abroad, beyond the Ethiopic Ocean. Oh, you say you don't know what the Ethiopic? Oh, you y'all call it today. You've been made to believe it's the Atlantic Ocean. No, that's the Ethiopic Ocean, right? So to this North country, right? To the Americas and the Caribbean, right? He says, from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, even the daughter of my disperse, shall bring mine offering, right? And then as you read forward here, right, it comes to the remnant of Israel, that remnant of that seed. When this matches up, spoke about genocide, literally. We've read it in the Amharic. And also you can hear it in some of the audios, some of the audios they have. He literally says the destruction of a race. They were seeking to exterminate Right, the Ethiopian Hebrew race. They were seeking to exterminate.